before we get into some anti-patterns for controllers, uh, there's one other thing in the controller that I'd like to uh, show you, or a couple other things I want to show you when it comes to customization. The first is the ability to pass different format options uh, to the view and uh, to the client. So if you go down to your create method right here, and I'm going to wrap the text so we can see it all on one uh, page. Uh, you see that you have this respond to block. What this respond to block is doing is it's letting us have some options. So if a the create process goes properly, so if it goes project.save, so if that all works and it doesn't have any validation errors or no bugs occur, then it's going to format HTML and it's also going to format JSON. And then it has some options inside of the HTML, like it's going to redirect to the project page and it's going to pass a notice. And you may have noticed this uh, different alert right here when you created it. Uh, when you'd create a project earlier, and this is where it stems from. So I'm going to uh, open this back up and start the Rails server. I'm going to come to projects once the server starts up. Okay, and I'm going to give us a new project. So just say my project description, create it, and you see this, a new project was successfully created. You may notice that this is the same as this notice text right here. So uh, this is where you would customize this. So you could do something like say, congratulations, the project was created. Then if we come back here, hit new project and do a new project, hit create, and there you go. Congratulations, the project was created. So that's how you're able to customize the, uh, the different notices that are sent back uh, when something's created, or you can see you can do the same thing on update. You really could do it for any type of action that takes place. Uh, it's simply an option that you can pass to this format HTML method. You also can customize some things on the JSON side. And here you can even see there are some conditionals. So this tells you what happens if you try to create one and it works. This block right here in this else statement tells you what you want, or you can dictate what you want to happen if it doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, it's going to format HTML and it's going to uh, render a new form template if that doesn't work, which is typically what you'd want. And it will also show the error messages for uh, why the creation didn't work. And you have a very similar type of process down here for the update method. Now scrolling down a little bit more, we can see the last public method is this destroy method. And you can also customize what you would have it say. Typically, I've never had an application that I kept the default text. I usually say the project was deleted, something like that. And there you go. So that's a way of customizing whatever alert comes up after a project has been removed. And you can come and test this in the browser. So if I want to uh, delete this one, it says, are you sure? Hit OK. And it was removed, and it says a project was deleted. This also lets you uh, control where what page it gets sent to after the project has been removed. The last thing we're going to cover in this video, we already talked about set project. Uh, I want to talk about the other private method. And what private methods are is they're methods that are, I don't want to say impossible to access outside of the class because Ruby is very flexible and it's possible to pretty much access anything from any other class um, if you know how to do it. But it, this is more of a standard uh, best code kind of operating procedure here uh, is to put methods that you only want accessed inside of this class, in this case, the projects controller class. Uh, you'd only access these from 
these different methods. And so set project, you wouldn't really want to access this outside the class, so you put it in a private method. The other one is this project params method. And what the project params are, these are strong parameters. This is something new in Rails 4, um, and it even gives you a nice little comment here. It says, never trust parameters from the scary internet, only allow the whitelist through, which means that for form elements or API calls, anything that gets passed through has to come through with these parameters. So in other words, these parameters right here, which if we open up our schema file, we see we have a title, description, and percent complete. You can see title, description, percent complete. Usually you're gonna wanna have these line up and match up. So uh, to see what would happen, uh, let me take out this description, hit save, and come here, hit new project, and my project, something here, and create project. It says, congratulations, the project was created, but look, the description text didn't get passed through. And the reason is because Rails is trying to protect you from a security perspective, so it forces you to whitelist all of the different parameters that you want to allow right here in this strong parameters method. And this strong parameters method is loaded up in different parts of this file. So if you scroll up, you can see it's here in the update method and it's here in the create method. So it loads these up and this is Rails saying, okay, for project and the params right here, we're gonna let title, description, and percent complete come through. I'm harping on this because one thing you'll find, say that we run a database migration right here and we wanna add something else like an author of the project. What would happen if we create it and it goes into the database, it will be there and everything will be fine, but we won't be able to set those values in the form until we've added them here in the controller method. And this can be kind of confusing to new Rails developers because if you forget to do this after you've done a migration, you'll wonder why in the world the form element isn't getting added into the database. And you'll see, you, you can see through the logs that you'll throw some very quiet errors, but uh, it's important always to put those parameters here in your strong parameter list if you want those values to show up. So if you've gone through that, you should have a pretty good idea of how the controllers work and what you should put inside of them. And next we're gonna start going through some anti-patterns for some controllers so that you stay away from some Rails bad practices.